California of the past. I am California of the past. I am California of the past. This is Florence Stephan. She lived nearly all of her hundred plus years in California, the last 16 of which were spent in Sunnyvale. However, she was born in Boone, Iowa on St. Patrick's Day in 1908. How did this little girl, born into a family of Iowa farmers, get all the way to California? Well, it was quite an adventure, and I'd like to tell you about it. I am her son, Richard. The family's wanderlust stemmed principally from her father, Jeremy Sparks. His major objection to living in Iowa was the weather. It seemed to be either scorching hot during the summer or bitter cold during the winter when much of the countryside surrounding Boone looked like this. In addition, relatives who had moved to California wrote letters gushing about the warm weather, the palm trees, and especially the sunshine fruit of Southern California. In the spring of 1915, when my mother was seven years old, my grandfather persuaded his little family to give California a try. The first leg of their journey took them from Boone to Goodland, Kansas, where my grandfather's brother lived, Point B. Then they crossed to the southeast corner of Colorado to Albuquerque, New Mexico, Point C. My mother related there, our car broke down and Papa had to order the parts, wait two days for them to be delivered, and then he fixed the car himself. Once repaired, they drove west across Arizona to San Diego and then north to Los Angeles. Much of the trail they followed from Albuquerque eventually became the famous Route 66. When I asked MapQuest about this journey, it calculated the distance to be 2,050 miles and estimated the driving time to be 31 hours and 30 minutes. Of course, they assume a drive on our modern superhighways with our safe, reliable cars and tires and with all the conveniences along the way. But what was this journey like in 1915? My grandfather's car was a five-passenger Model T Ford, similar to the one pictured here. It had a four-cylinder engine which produced a whopping 20 horsepower, and the car could attain a top speed of 40 miles per hour. A new one cost $640 in Detroit. Their little car had no instrument panel, no radio, and most of all, no heater. Notice the only insulation provided to protect the passengers from the outside conditions was the little Isinglass windshield and the covering overhead. Thus, when they encountered a snowstorm in Colorado, they sat bundled up in blankets and tried to keep each other warm. My grandfather compensated for the lack of a gas gauge by dipping a yardstick into the tank and taking note of the gas level. They carried extra gas as stations were few and far between. Before they could leave Boone, they first had to prepare their car for the cross-country trip. Why prepare the car, you ask? Well, as my mom reminded me several times, there was virtually no place to stay along the way. This was many years before the days of auto camps, like this one made famous in Frank Capra's film, It Happened One Night. So the car had to be their little traveling home for the journey. My grandfather fixed the front bench seat so that its back would fold down and make a level platform with the back seat. This made a bed for my grandparents. Then he rigged a hammock which ran between the two sides of the car in which my mother slept. When they got tired, they just pulled off the road and that's where they spent the night. My mother remembered that they never were afraid at any of their stops. Notice I said road and not highway. Really, most of the way they were driving in tracks, hardened by other vehicles similar to this view in the desert. There were no road maps and virtually no road signs. They saw almost no other travelers. 
but when they did meet another car, one of the cars pulled off the tracks to let the other pass. Often my mom and her mother had to get out of the car to lighten the load on the engine when going uphill and to save the brakes when going down. When they encountered soft sand, they put quilts under the tires and pushed as hard as they could. Once during a rainstorm, they got hopelessly stuck in mud, as you see this poor traveler is as well. My grandfather went to a nearby farm and asked the farmer to bring his horses and pull them out with a rope. My mom lost count of how many flat tires they endured. As this gentleman is doing, my grandfather jacked up the car, took off the wheel, took the tire off, and patched the tube, only to repeat these steps and finally pump up the tire with his little hand pump. In what seemed like hardly no time at all, he was doing it all over again. Through all these hardships and adventures, the little family did indeed arrive in Los Angeles. If there had been a 1915 version of MapQuest, they might not have attempted the trip at all, for it would have estimated their driving time to be six weeks. My grandfather did find his sunshine fruit and later began working at the MGM studio as a carpenter. Despite making several trips back to Iowa to visit relatives, they all remained in California for the rest of their lives.